So I think if okay, we can let people in. We'll be starting momentarily. We're just uh, exercising our facial mouth muscles with producing no sound. So if you hear no sound, we're seeing your mouth move, our mouth move, it's intentional. Your speakers are probably working. We should start now. What are we waiting for? I think we can begin. Josephine. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Protect launch. Thank you for taking time to attend Hi, our virtual press conference. I would like to have a special welcome to our city councilor, Kristen Wong Tam for Toronto Center and a representative from Cynthia Lai for Scarborough North. So uh, Kristen, I would like to invite you to make a brief remarks. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, it is a pleasure to be joining everyone on the press conference today. Uh, the critical work um, that you will be hearing about uh, I will say right now that I entirely uh, endorse. Uh, there has been some system gaps that we recognize has taken place uh, uh, within different communities, uh, and in particular, the Chinese Canadian community that has had a very uh, specific type of impact uh, because of coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Uh, we know that every order of government is working as hard as they can, as quickly as they can to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. At the same time, we also must recognize that there are some communities that are doing just that, not making ends meet, living in further harm and isolation, living with mental anguish, the sense of, um, uh, of being alone, and perhaps there can be a number of other systemic barriers that they face, such as language and culture. So, Project Protec uh, and the group that's come together by way of self-organization to propel the conversation forward, to better communicate and coordinate the services, and to work collaboratively with agencies, community partners, and governments is the, is the step in the right direction. Just as we knew in 2003, when the SARS outbreak first took hold, not every community was bearing that responsibility proportionally. There were some communities that was asked to bear, uh, to carry additional burdens. 
And in that case, it was a Chinese Canadian community, East Asian communities, as they were starting to experience xenophobia and racism. The fear today, and it's coming true, is that the community is once again living with those social harms. So that's why it's critically important that this conversation uh, begin and the work that Project Protect is doing, uh, I wholeheartedly endorse and I'm very happy that it is happening. And I look forward to working with you at the city of Toronto to further your work and to make sure that you can be plugged into the government responses and we as government can be informed by your lived experience and your project knowledge and your connections and deep roots within the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. And absolutely, we will collaborate with the government and other organization. So may I now invite uh, the representative from Cynthia Lai's office, Scarborough North, to say, to make a brief remark. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Cynthia Lai herself. I have, I have no oh, representative. Hi, I oh, was told that someone else was coming on your behalf. Welcome. Oh, I thought uh, my EA should be on this call too. So uh, I don't know whether he's on or not, but uh, just so that I, 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 first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Christian for inviting me to, to join this group. And uh, I just uh, learned about it uh, over the weekend. And uh, I, I am actually very honored to be invited. And so, uh, first of all, as a child here to, to fight this um, COVID-19 pandemic together. And we have been, everybody have been doing our part in, uh, in doing, you know, making sure that all our community pull together and everybody bring people together to help each other, to help one another. So I'm, I'm looking forward to actually learning more about this, um, your group and the project. And uh, going forward, uh, I, you know, I will see how, how we can collaborate to make this a success. So thank you very much again for inviting me. By the way, I don't know how to put my video on. Uh, I mean, I'm not a very tech. Someone show me how I can, I can show my pretty face here on the screen. Uh, yes, so there should be a uh, an icon at the bottom of your screen, okay. so you can yeah. click on it. Okay. It's a video okay. camera. Thank you so much. Okay. Cynthia. Um, it's great to meet you. Now we can see you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Great. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, introduction about our project. In mid-February, when our team gathered in response to the CIHR call for COVID-19 rapid response research, Canada was in the early days of the pandemic. But what came to our mind was the experience of Chinese Canadian communities during SARS outbreak. Many of us on the PROTECT team were at the forefront of the SARS response. We witnessed the tremendous human suffering related to trauma, loss, stigma, discrimination. But at the same time, we were really inspired by the community actions that actually contributed to our collective resilience. As the first racialized group hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese Canadian and diasporic communities have once again experienced increased anti-Chinese racism and hate crime, stigma and discrimination, which further intensify the huge mental health, economic and social impacts that is shared by the broader Canadian communities. The hardest hit group within the Chinese Canadian communities are our seniors, individual and families with pre-existing economic hardship, chronic mental illnesses, language barriers, and other forms of social marginalization. PROTECT is informed by the needs of our communities. It is built on the insight and lessons learned from SARS, as well as our team's extensive experience in designing and carrying out community-based action program to reduce stigma, promote mental health, and facilitate community self-determination. That's what PROTECT is all about. As you will hear from our colleagues here on the panel, PROTECT is unique and robust. It consists of multiple dynamic and innovative components, including a virtual resource hub, and online learning to address mental health needs, and a community action strategies. All these components work together to enhance the capacity 
of our team and our communities to respond to emerging needs. Our team is proud to say that the whole project is greater than the sum of its parts. On that note, I will now invite my colleague Mandana to talk about the resource hub and perhaps Jenny, you could put the hub on the share page. Thank you, Mandana. So Mandana, you had to turn your mic on. Okay, sharing screen. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Josephine, and I would like to thank everyone who are present today to listen to, uh, about our project. Our project InfoHub is a unique and innovative multidimensional and multilingual virtual resource hub with an interactive live chat component for the community. It is multidimensional because it includes credible information, not only on physical, but also psychological and social impacts of COVID-19. It offers resources and strategies that would promote mental health and community resilience. The information is provided in Chinese languages, mainly Cantonese and Mandarin and English language. As you all agree, there is a vast amount of rapidly changing and often confusing and contradictory inf information on a pandemic. This is challenging for people to navigate and access most updated and credible information, particularly for that sector of population with low health literacy. So an important contribution of Protect Info Hub is the way it curates and streamlines culturally appropriate and locally relevant up-to-date information about the COVID uh, epidemic, preventive practices, and other mental and social aspects of health. The Hub Info includes links to accurate and credible information and language-specific videos to enhance access to important information. Furthermore, we provide tips on how to evaluate unfiltered information from diverse sources of traditional and social media. We offer guiding criteria that people could use to help them to evaluate the credibility of source of information. For instance, does the information come from a reputable organization that has authority to act? Our hub info is unique because it provides mental health first aid support strategies to address anxiety, fear, emotional distress, grief, and a stigma related to COVID-19 and helps to connect individuals to needed services. It also includes a live chat through texting or by phone to handle queries and gather concerns in the Chinese and affected communities. This program is offered five days plus one evening per week. Details are provided in the flyers in the media kit. My colleague, Kenneth, will be elaborating on this aspect later. Finally, one of the most valuable contribution of our hub info is providing a medium to offer strategies to deal with the stigma, discrimination, and other related challenges currently faced by the community. It provides information and support, use, uh, support users to get involved in the communities. My colleague, Alan, will be talking about this later. I would now pass, uh, pass it to Kenneth to talk about the mental health component. Thank you. Kenneth, you have to unmute. Again, I was exercising my facial muscle to prepare my voice. So don't worry about that. <laughs> so greetings to everyone and welcome to uh, joining us. And we're so glad that you're here to join us. Um, I think that uh, as what uh, Mandana and Josephine were saying, that in the face of this pandemic, it certainly impacts and touches every one of us, I'm sure, as you're watching. Um, and this is so across the country, whether you've been uh, infected uh, by COVID-19 or know someone who is infected by COVID-19 or the fact that you are alive and breathing and every hour of the day you're listening to news about what to do and what not to do. I think our lives have all been touched in some way or another by the COVID-19. So the impact of COVID-19 cannot be understated. And I think that uh, in a time of a pandemic and a crisis, uh, a lot of emphasis, and rightly so, 
is put on how to prevent yourself from catching it. And I think that is very important for our physical health and safety and for the public good. On the other hand, I think what is sometimes seen as like a second consideration or an afterthought is, well, what about the mental health component? So it is one of the most important um, needs that we need to address to in the larger community and especially those who are affected um, in a more profound way. And one, one such community is the Chinese community. The Chinese communities have been coping with the pandemic, even in Canada, as Chinese Canadians, uh, quite early on when a lot of our loved ones or friends in Asia are suffering from the consequences of COVID-19, either because of physical or because of economic or social impact. And when it finally hits North America, so to speak, uh, we are not only contending just like everyone else with anxiety and fear and trying to do our best, we are also starting to uh, encounter things like racism or blame on top. And this is at a time when the Chinese community actually has been actively working to work together with the larger Canadian community to provide solutions. And sometimes rather than hearing us as Chinese Canadians as providing solutions, we are seen as the problem. And psychologically, that is a huge uh, and additional load on this. So as we were designing the website and we were scouring the web for resources in multiple languages, what we do, do notice is a distinct, relatively weak uh, emphasis on the importance of mental health and well-being, either completely ignored or e e phrased in ways that are psychopathologizing, other words, in other words, looking for mental illness. Instead, what we have decided to take, undertake in this approach in our whole project is to start with mental health and resilience and put it front and center. Just like the fact that we are facing this pandemic together, uh, even in the times of social inequity and racism, in terms of mental health, it touches every one of us, even though it's a very stigmatizing topic. So on our website, you will find a lot of information uh, from the internet and also from our mental health team that it's been curated, created, designed, and tailored to help both the Chinese community and the community at large to meet the mental health needs, both in terms of building positive mental health and resilience, as well as early intervention to prevent uh, mental health and mental illness symptoms uh, from arising. So I think that is a key role in the function of the website that is perhaps very distinct from most other websites that each page, um, the way we have put things down is both informative, but also mindful of the psychological impact uh, that, it, that it will have on the reader, not, on, not only in terms of reporting statistics, the way we have done it, to actually providing mental health help content, to presenting social justice issues, uh, both in terms of how it affects an individual psychologically but also as a community socially, and also what we can do about it. All those are important components. And of course, mental health support is not only what you can read on the page. So we've decided to provide the live chat support as Mandana indicated. It will be available uh, both in terms of the form of live text chatting, as well as by voice uh, during our hours of operation. And with the great government listening, uh, we may be funded to expand our hours as well. We do uh, see the, the passion of a lot of uh, people who've experienced counseling who volunteer to staff our live chat support. And I think this is what it is in terms of recovery and resilience, because mental health resilience depends on each and every one of us. So if one of us is hurt, all of us are hurt in some ways. And we need to support each and every one of us emotionally and psychologically. And we see this also in terms of giving. So um, I think that this project in both having the website as well as the live chat support is gonna foster individual mental health well-being and resilience as well as the larger community mental health and resilience. And towards the end of May, we will also launch 
an even more intensive online training to promote mental health and well-being for those directly or severely impacted by the COVID-19, as well as frontline service providers. So uh, for those of you who are listening, please spread the message about our website, the importance of mental health and caring for each other. And for those of you who are really impacted, please also stay tuned to our website because we will continue to roll out programming to meet the community needs, both the Chinese Canadian community, the community needs and also the community at large for us to meet the pandemic together. And not only that, to be able to continue to thrive and grow through our experience of working together. And it is on this theme that I will uh, pass on to our next speaker, uh, who is a great community mobilizer, uh, Dr. Alan Lee. Good morning and thank you, Kenneth. Um, I'm Alan Lee. I'm one of the uh, co-leads on the ProTech team. I'm actually excited and sad that we have to meet like this. I'm sad because this is at least the first major epidemic that have directly impacted the communities I'm very close to. Um, started with the HIV AIDS epidemic that have killed a large proportion of the friends that I grew up with to the SARS pandemic that has especially impacted the Chinese community uh, here at home as well as in Asia. And now the uh, global pandemic of COVID-19. So, um, but the worst thing is that we are not only confronting a uh, pandemic of a virus, we are actually also witnessing another exacerbation of the pandemic that uh, of stigma, racism, and hate that has been uh, infecting our community and our society for a much longer time. So in ProTag, I'm co-leading the component called Spark, which is a community engagement component. Um, and it's a very exciting component. Uh, we have this in mind when we developed the project because we realized that as the first racialized communities hit by the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese Canadian communities and actually Chinese uh, communities and Asian communities all over the world has seen rising incidents of racism and stigma and hate all around the world. In Canada alone, um, I was doing research and I was responsible for um, helping to put together the social issues part of the information hub. And I think along with my working group members, I was traumatized when we have to research and look through all the news in the last few weeks about all the uh, racist incidents that's been happening, you know, just in Canada alone. You've seen hate graffitis in Chinese community centers. We've seen 90 year old Chinese seniors being thrown to the ground by people. We've seen Asian nurses being sped on at the subway. And we've seen um, young couples being harassed and assaulted and resulting in fractures that needs to go to the ER. So these are just tips of the iceberg of many, many other incidents of racism and hate that I'm sure that doesn't make it to the media. And this is why it's really important that our work focus not only in preventing and fighting the virus, but also preventing and fighting racism, stigma and discrimination. But the worst thing is, that racism is not even the only social ill that we have to fight when it comes with COVID-19. As Josephine said earlier, um, this pandemic also exposed the many other underlying health and social inequities that has plagued many uh, marginalized groups within our communities. You know, the workers who are underpaid, who work in unstable and protected jobs, who may not even qualify for SERP, marginalized groups who live in poverty in overcrowding conditions in shelters and who are homeless, who cannot even afford to do social distancing. And our elders in the communities, in the community nursing home, who have faced this onslaught of COVID-19 crisis because of the chronic underfunding, understaffing of our nursing home system, as well as the cutback in our public health, 
in the last few years that make us so unprepared for the onslaught of this epidemic. So that is why we really need an army to fight the COVID-19 um, crisis. And I'm glad that the PROTEC team has actually assembled a very um, diverse, caring, uh, passionate, and committed team of partners from all sectors um, who are committed to provide compassionate care and advance social justice and collective empowerment. So on our website, there is the um, community engagement component um, where there is space for us to share our community stories of resilience and there, where there is also places where you can pitch and champion ideas for community care initiatives, as well as places where we can link to other community actions to advocate for uh, social justice and public policy changes. Another component of our collaboration comes with working with other partners uh, through different uh, work groups. And we already have over 100 volunteers, even before our launch, uh, you know, doing the live chats, helping to put together the info hub, and also planning collaborative activities. In the last couple of weeks, we've organized community consultation sessions. And we, as a result of that, we're already generating new community initiatives in response to the needs that are identified. For example, we are now putting together, uh, working with uh, our nursing home partners to um, develop bereavement support for families directed, effect, directly affected by COVID-19. And then on our team, there is also vast diversity of both uh, community, government, uh, health, social service sector uh, collaborators who we work together very closely to um, mobilize and also um, advance different initiatives. So one of the uh, initiatives that we are very proud to be collaborating on and support to um, promote is the online anti-racism reporting to by the Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto chapter and the Chinese Canadian National Council for Social Justice. Uh, I had been a member of CCNC for many years and uh, way back in the 90s, so I'm glad that you know, our lives has come full circle and we are collaborating and working on social justice issues again. And as we learn from HIV and AIDS and from SARS, we know that stigma kills and silence can equal deaths. So I really would encourage all our communities who have experienced discrimination and injustices to report the incidents, not only for your sake, but for the importance of exposing the ep epidemic of hate so that others with similar experiences do not have to suffer in silence and so that we can get support and build a safe and supportive community for all of us. So as Josephine said earlier, PROTAC is so much more than the sums of its parts and our strengths come from the synergies and collective power we generate through our vast collective community collaborative partnerships. And so that's why even though I'm very sad, I'm also very excited and hopeful that with us all working together, we'll be able to uh, address the complex, challenging uh, pandemic that is COVID-19. So um, I would like to invite now uh, Kate Shaw from CCNC Toronto chapter to share with us the, uh, some of the collaborative anti-racism initiatives that uh, we've been working together on and CCNC is leading. Kate? Thank you, Ellen, for reminding us why we're all here today. On behalf of the Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter, we are incredibly excited to be involved as a collaborating team member in this important and dynamic endeavor. CCNCTO has been advocating for equity, social justice, and civil rights amongst the Chinese Canadian community in the Toronto area for the past 40 years. With the onset of COVID-19, the Chinese Canadian community has faced heightened racism and discrimination as already described by my colleagues. Like PROTEC, CCNCTO has been working to alleviate the impacts um, of COVID-19 faced by our community through several grassroots initiatives, one of which is the creation of an online racism reporting tool, which is developed through funding from the Department of Canadian Heritage in partnership with the Chinese Canadian National Council for Social Justice, the Chinese and Southeast Asian Legal Clinic, and the Civic Engagement Network in Vancouver. 
It's the first of its kind and currently the only online racism reporting tool targeted to Chinese and East Asian communities across the country. This, forward, this reporting tool can be accessed through CCNCTO's website and will also be available through ProTech's online resource hub. It invites individuals from across Canada to document both in person and online incidents of discrimination that they've experienced or observed during the current pandemic through a confidential survey. The information gathered will then be used in, to better inform and support CCNC's anti-racism advocacy work and to communicate the shared concerns of discrimination held by Chinese Canadian and other Asian Canadian communities in relation to this pandemic. Given the aligned interest to alleviate and respond to impacts of COVID-19, CCNC and TO and ProTech have come together to more efficiently meet the needs of the communities we serve. The information gathered from the survey will be shared with ProTech so that our teams can work together and plan more joint anti-racism initiatives. We're also collaborating with ProTech on its community engagement strategies to facilitate the continuation of needs identification to address unmet and emerging challenges faced by the Chinese Canadian population. Thank you again for, for inviting us to collaborate in this incredibly critical project. And thank you all for attending today's event. Thank you, Kate. And now I would like to invite another of our collaborating uh, partner, Bonnie Wong from Hong Fook uh, Mental Health Association to share some of the collaborative work we're working together. Bonnie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to uh, extend my um, you know, warm welcome to everyone to the Mental Health Week, because this year the uh, focus is on social connection. So um, I'm very particularly delighted and thank you for um, the invitation as a community collaborators of this uh, project team, a project led by uh, Josephine Wong. And, and also I think um, the importance is uh, we are aware that um, mental health stigma has been a long lasting uh, you know, challenges uh, to everyone in particular in the uh, Chinese community. So the PUTEP project is can definitely offering uh, culturally and linguistically uh, accurate and relevant information, uh, which is particularly in line with uh, Hong Fook's vision in championing uh, culturally competent care uh, in the past uh, 38 years. Uh, the goal is to combat uh, mental health uh, stigma, as well as to increase the mental health literacy uh, in the province of Ontario. So in particular, we are finding the three important components of this project are very uh, much helpful to the broader community. The first one is about their live chat uh, platform. It will provide immediate response uh, and also offer uh, the human touch that uh, to reduce the caller's uh, anxiety uh, because uh, callers may feel listened and supported and will receive uh, some useful tips and uh, resources or short-term solutions. Uh, the live track of volunteers can also screen the callers and make appropriate mental health uh, referrals to us. Uh, it actually helps us to ease the burden of the volume of the uh, mental health uh, intake calls. It also helps our staff uh, to lessen their concerns on the wait time and can focus on mental health intervention effectively. Uh, the second component, PACER, this is very uh, unique and it it's important that uh, there will be enhancing community support uh, and also will increase the mental health educational workshops and uh, outreach to reduce stigma and build community capacity and resilience. The, pro the project itself will enhance um, and improve the uh, uh, social, um, uh, you know, isolation and also will build inclusion in the long run. So the third component, I think it is really um, 
uh, resource, uh, important for to provide to the committee is the committee resources uh, hub. Um, this will be uh, for public, and uh, all the information are trilingual. And uh, many uh, nonprofit organizations like Hong Fu do not have all the financial and human resources to invest in the translation and ongoing maintenance for website and social media. So I think all this uh, important initiative and project uh, component uh, will have a bigger uh, impact in the community. So we also anticipate the growing um, wait time just past the um, um, COVID-19. So we need this types of uh, academic and professional team projects uh, to work in collaboration for future intervention. So I really um, found beneficial to be one of the collab committee collaborators and uh, contributing to the uh, project success. Thank you. Great, thank you, Bonnie. Um, it's really great that uh, Bonnie had reminded us that it's Mental Health Week. And at this point, I think you can hear from all our team members the passion and commitment and the very heart touching, wrenching, but warming uh, activities that we have been doing. I would also like to uh, you know, thank our funder which is the Government of Canada's New Frontier in Research Fund. I applaud the Government of Canada to actually bring this out earlier on in February. Um, policy, practice, frontline activism and everything also need to be documented and captured. And that's what our protect project will do. We'll capture the processes, the outcome identified gaps, so that at the end, the project actually could be translated into a toolkit and a framework to enable Chinese Canadian communities, as well as other marginalized communities to actually use it as a tool to respond to the epidemic of diseases, as well as oppressions, racism, and marginalization. So uh, right now, I would like to pass it back to Ellen so that we can open up to questions. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. And thanks everyone for joining us. So we, um, we would like to uh, take some of your questions. I actually need to see the screen or if people can raise their hand, that would be helpful. I actually cannot see the whole thing. Let me see. Um, maybe Jenny, you could highlight who's raising questions. We'd like yes, sure. So if I can ask everyone who would have um, questions to either raise your hand electronically through Zoom, or you can type in your question directly into the chat box and we can read it out loud. Thank you. I don't see any hands raised. <laughs> This is very unusual because I usually uh, we have press a question. Press with okay. Us. There's a question from we now. We have magazine. a question. Yeah. From Sadaf. Hi there. I'm with Now Magazine. I think this is a fantastic. I think this is fantastic. And I'm curious if any part of the 240 million mental health program investment Trudeau announced yesterday is going towards the project. He mentioned contributions towards marginalized mental health initiatives. Kenneth, so do you wanna take this question? Um, yeah, the announcement is great, um, but none of that funding is connected with this project. Um, so if uh, uh, the Prime Minister is listening, we are, <laughs> do, we are asking for more support. Um, yeah, so the, the, the funding announcement is certainly great, but it, it's, as always, and in these kinds of fundings, it takes a little while to, to funnel down through the system. And I have to say, unfortunately, Again, the marginalized groups uh, like the Chinese community um, is not necessarily the ones that are able to receive that funding. Oftentimes it goes to uh, bigger uh, mainstream agencies, which is still great, but uh, the, the, the reality of the situation is that the mental health well-being has been documented in research again and again, even from the Ontario statistics that the Chinese Canadians are among the worst in terms of when they are admitted, they are even sicker, 
than the average Canadian of other races. They have a much lower sense of belonging compared to other ethnic communities. So while we know and we for sure have identified uh, gaps in services for the Chinese Canadian community, the reality is that most initiatives and funding that you hear do not filter down to the marginalized groups and even a very huge minority group like the Chinese Canadians uh, hardly would be able to access it, unfortunately. And that's why we have projects like this. Hopefully that will change. Maybe we can go to the next question or I can continue uh, trying to advocate for more mental health funding for the Chinese Canadians. Um, the thing that I would like to add on is that because we have many uh, community partners and collaborators like uh, Hongfu, as Bonnie had talked about, so if this funding come out, then we will likely really support our partners to do something so that it will, you know, get funneled to our community uh, members. Yes, we are trying our best. And Bonnie wants to speak to that too. Um, I think this is uh, a very uh, important time that uh, we work as a group to um, present uh, the community can also be part of the solution. So I think the government's uh, funding is uh, very appreciative uh, at all times, we know that uh, mental health services are very underfunded. Uh, many of the uh, health dollars is basically going to a larger, um, you know, organization like hospitals, and also always very disease focused. And um, what we would like to advocate for is um, not only uh, doing the uh, treatment uh, is the only important thing. I think prevention and also education uh, are equally uh, critical, especially um, the whole project is promoting a lot on community resilience. So in terms of um, you know, funding allocation, uh, there has been a lot of focusing on major, larger uh, corporation. For example, the uh, previous uh, mental health uh, funding announcement, basically to the uh, youth and children, uh, all the money goes to Kids Helpline. So we know many of uh, the new uh, immigrants, uh, newcomers, uh, because of language and culture, uh, that's very difficult to maneuver uh, the uh, mental health system. So having uh, community organizations like Home Folk and also this type of project is building the bridge uh, to uh, increase the equity uh, for more people can access for services. So having the dialogue continuously is to make the voice to be heard, uh, understand, understanding the barriers in the access, barriers in uh, understanding uh, how we can help the clients uh, to uh, have uh, some adaptive changes in seeking help in earlier stage. Uh, like Dr. Uh, um, Kenneth Feng says, uh, people go to the emergency or um, pretty much it's the last resort. Um, they don't seek help early on because of stigma. Or when they are sick, uh, they get the prescription, maybe antidepressant, they hesitate to refill the prescription because it's the first time they disclose that they have mental illness. So I'm hoping that uh, for this um, opportunity, uh, we can uh, definitely uh, voice out our concerns and uh, hopefully uh, we will get uh, some resources uh, from the little bucket uh, to be able to support uh, the essential initiative like this POTAD, as well as to continue to support mental health organizations who are providing services to marginalized or visible minorities, immigrants and refugees. And hopefully we can work continuously uh, to make a better uh, community. Yeah, just to add on to what Bonnie is saying, just very briefly, culture and language is so important, especially in mental health care, as you can imagine. And unfortunately, psychological intervention often suffers, um, and we cannot just rely on everybody taking a pill. So Hong Fook, as well as my hospital, my program, uh, AIM, Asian Initiative Mental Health, the Toronto Western, we collaborate in a psychological program uh, that provides I, what we call IBGT, a very unique psychological intervention. Um, but again, it's a very tiny program, but this is an example of what's 
missing. An actual psychological intervention and not just a solution for a pill or you go to a mainstream organization that cannot serve your needs. And also on our website, in the, in the positive mental health part, if you look at our website, um, we have a mental health resilience tool that I would invite all of you, I challenge all of you to go in and do a self-test to look at your resilience and see where you score because it looks at really both our internal resilience as well as our resilience from the external community. So it is a positive mental health approach and psychological approach. Um, these are what is badly missing in the system. Okay, so I see another question um, about the online reporting too. Uh, would Kate, you wanna describe it a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So the online reporting tool um, is accessed through our website. It collects data like the reportee's race, um, the type of discrimination that occurred um, or witnessed, the impact of the discrimination and the desired resolution um, as to what the reportee wants to see from uh, reporting the incident. And I just want to add that you can um, report discrimination or harassment that you experienced firsthand or that you witnessed um, someone else experience. Thank you, Kate. Uh, also, um, we can, uh, we, you're welcome to raise questions in uh, Cantonese and Mandarin. Uh, Thank you. And then there is another question about the um, uh, from Ivan Yip. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the role of infection prevention and control team and capacity is well recognized. To what extent are we able to leverage similar processes to create visible platform to further launch mental health wellness prevention and control capacity in the community? And do we have data to indicate uh, where we live matter most in mental health support and management? So again, I guess I'll pass it back to our mental health expert. Um, I think that this is a, a brilliant idea uh, because uh, as, as we've discussed together, the importance of addressing mental health well-being and not just the physical health. Right? Because the physical health, most of us will not experience a virus, or if we experience it, most of us will not be very physically ill from it. Of course, we do have to prevent the spread, and we do need to care for those who are vulnerable. And yet, the mental health impact has already touched every single one of us, even if you isolate yourself at home. In fact, maybe because you isolate yourself at home. So as a pandemic response, I think, uh, Ivan, this is an excellent and thoughtful suggestion that in addition to having um, um, something like an IPAC to gauge the, the, the infection control response, it is the mental health response. In fact, uh, I know that my patients, and I know the same, like in my clinic and Hong Fook, um, I've also talked to Bonnie, and we share that we are actually already seeing a rise in mental health needs in the community. And the patients I personally talk to um, they are either very sad or very depressed from losing loved ones here or in Asia, or they're very scared of going out. Or I have one patient who have nightmares every night, dreaming of people saying that you are Chinese, shame on you. You bring virus to this country. And she's crying and waking up every night as a nightmare. So I think that we cannot underestimate the impact of the virus psychologically, emotionally to everyone. Now, this has led to not only increasing calls uh, to our office or the severity of people who are already suffering from depression and anxiety that are struggling. We are also seeing families who are trapped together with increased incidence of domestic violence. We are also seeing people with special needs children uh, whether it's autism, intellectual disability are trapped in the same household with more conflict and risky situations, with a lot of uh, negative both how outcomes in terms of domestic violence and, and, and abuse going on. And then we're also seeing people who are institutionalized for mental health issues or special needs children in settings 
that are now cutting off visitations and causing uh, enormous emotional distress, both in those with uh, special needs and intellectual disabilities in, institu in institutionalized care and the parents who are often forbidden to go visit. And a lot of these uh, children or young adults um, just like those in nursing home are feeling trapped. So the enormity of the emotional uh, mental health impact uh, cannot be underestimated. And yes, this has led to, um, I know that there are instances and cases of suicide and suicide attempts, things that we don't want to talk, even talk about or think about. Um, so not only are we facing with the real mortality rate, and as we are looking at the pandemic curve, we are also looking at mental health outcomes in terms of illness, comorbidity, and even suicide. So it's a serious issue, and we need to take proactive steps to address it. And something similar to the IPAC needs to be, um, be in place. So I think this is a very good suggestion. Yeah, Thank you, I Kenneth. Josephine? Yeah. Yes, I would like to add to that is that, as Alan had already pointed out, I do see that when the, you know, virus, you know, start to slow down, disappear, and it seems like the physiological related COVID-19 start to settle, we will see an epidemic of like psychological and social impact. Um, as Alan had pointed out, there are people who already have been traumatized and the economic recovery is not gonna affect everybody in the same way. So I really think that these are really great questions and we need to continue to build our community so that we can respond because mental illness and mental health challenges and economic challenges don't kill us right away. We wouldn't be put into intensive care right away they always get left behind and, you know, just sweep under the rug. And so all the existing inequities that's already there will just be intensified. So we need to be much more alert and much more proactive in addressing this. So I really agree with Kenneth, as well as all the things that Alan had pointed out. And also, maybe we should also address the second part of Yvonne's question regarding the data. He, um, it's asked as well, do we have data to indicate where we live matter most in mental health support and management? I'm really glad that Yvonne, you have actually raised that issue. That also indicates some of our uh, um, lack of data in certain areas where we would be able to show the social determinant of health in, in, and their impact on mental and social uh, uh, well-being. So we can actually, produce, I mean, and also having just um, access to, uh, you know, location of your home in a place where uh, mental health services are available does not justify that the people are getting actually the support. However, if we want to show that uh, relationship, we could actually use proxies and we could actually link different data in order to show where people who are uh, affected by COVID-19 and where their support is available, what would kind of outcome will actually be faced by that group. So um, to make the answer short, the data is not available. This is another areas that we can actually look at and try to get, uh, you know, provide direction to government in terms of select, um, collection of these sorts of data. But currently, if you want to do it, we may be able to do it through the proxies by linking different databases, just to be able to show the location that you leave geographically, does that impact your mental health? Thank you. It is also with this in mind that our live chat support and our PACER and our website, uh, we will be inviting people to submit uh, uh, and their needs, right? Because we'll be engaging. And with part of that, there will be an optional data collection that people can say, I live in this region and there's really no supports here. So we're going to get some amount of data. As you heard from Mandana, we really lack data. Um, and so hopefully our project will be able to at least provide a little bit of data on the people that still have a lot of unmet needs, whether it's psychological unmet needs or social unmet needs, um, if they voluntarily uh, provide their information to us and that we'll be able to report to the government that 
the exact uh, amount of amount needs that are out there that that has been uh, submitted to our website. So we there's definitely encourage that engagement and dialogue, and we can bridge the community needs and the government so that we can effectively address these needs together. Thank you. That's a very thoughtful question and discussion. Um, and I wanted to also uh, emphasize that, you know, for also reporting the um, racism and other uh, incidents of discrimination, you can use the uh, online too, but you can also share stories uh, on our website. So, um, and we wanted to invite stories, um, not only of suffering and uh, discrimination, but also, um, you know, also stories of resilience and how our communities organize, fight back, support each other. And the two actually is uh, coordinated across the country nationally. Um, so different uh, cities uh, and different organization partners are also doing similar things. One of the key problem that I think the uh, Chinese Canadian and a lot of Asian communities have faced is that we under report and we under um, highlight the experiences in our community. And so a lot of times, um, you know, those issues doesn't come to the surface. And I think with mental health, with racism, with any other social conditions that is stigmatizing, uh, like infectious disease that, you know, it actually keep people from presenting themselves. And when the communities is already stigmatized and labeled as vectors of viruses, it makes it very hard for people to present for care whether it's mental health care or even basic uh, support and, and physical health care. So I think it's really important that we really challenge stigma from all fronts and um, also make sure that our, the, the experiences of our communities get counted. We have another question from Facebook Live. Um, is the NCTO's reporting tool being shared to Vancouver and across Canada? Hi. Thanks for the question. Yeah, the tools uh, shared across Canada. So we encourage people from not just Vancouver and Toronto to access the tool, but people from every city or region across the country. Um, I wanna add that all of the information gathered from the survey will be turned into an interactive website a year down the road uh, with an interactive map and a timeline to track where racist incidents have occurred during the pandemic. And you also have um, WeChat and, and uh, online support when people are reporting, right? So they can contact CCNC? Exactly, so when you um, check out the website and I encourage everyone to do so, um, CCNC's contact uh, is listed. If anyone has any problems um, accessing the survey or if they have any questions concerning their individual impact from racism or discrimination. And um, the survey will be available in four languages. Uh, it'll be in simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, English, and French. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Um, so one of the uh, our speakers have raised the issue that we may want to leave some additional time for the Chinese media to uh, ask us questions. So when the uh, media launch conference finished, maybe for those of us who wanted to stay behind to uh, ask questions in Chinese, we would invite you to stay a little bit longer. Josephine, do you want to welcome and, and thank people and wrap this part of the media conference? Um, um, we okay, John, we let you Oh, sorry. Yeah, we have one more question from Facebook. I'm just pasting it into the group now. I think that's a follow-up question about the anti-discrimination. How would you want the community to report the incidents to get assistance? So again, like uh, we just talked about the uh, CCNC online reporting too, and also the um, 
number and WhatsApp contact that you can call, right? Maybe Kate can reiterate that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so if people have specific questions about how to get assistance uh, with regards to harassment or discrimination they face during the pandemic, they're welcome to contact CCNCTO and our contact information is available on the survey. Great. Thank you. And also on our website, there is uh, practical tips on how to deal with uh, stigma and discrimination. And also uh, there are other resources uh, online that you can link to um, to get support. Uh, we also invite you to share the stories. And one of the function of our community engagement component is to organize community town halls and also follow up uh, working groups as needs arise. So we'll continue to work with CCNC and other partners uh, on uh, watching and monitoring the uh, incidents of racism and develop additional support and strategies uh, beyond what we're already doing. But on the website, there is also other um, fact sheets and other resources that you could access to um, help address uh, stigma and discrimination. And also part of our, our training also uh, would, um, through both the live chat and the PACER training, would also provide tips that help us deal with some of the impact. Uh, back to Josephine. Yes, so thank you everyone for coming. Uh, it's 12.01. Before I let all of you go, or some of you go, I know that you probably, some of you might be feeling very impressed that Protect had already had more than 100 volunteers working with us. Actually, in order for us to actually provide uh, the live chat, we need more volunteers and also as Canada and all the different provinces start to open up the economy, there'll be lots of changes in guidelines. And so we need all kinds of volunteers who will come and continue to support us. As Ellen had pointed out, Protect is not a static project. It's dynamic in a sense that every time we talk to the community and we identify an urgent issue that requires attention, we went and got more volunteers and respond to it in a very timely manner. So if you could actually support us by going through our material and actually sending out our links so that we can get more volunteers, that would be great. And it's not just about getting people to do protect activities. I think that part of the healing for us for this pandemic that is political, social, physiological, and you know, psychological is opportunity for people to participate. That's part of our healing together. So we really count on you to support us. And so at this point, uh, if any team members have anything to add, please do so. And if not, I'm going to let everybody go, except you know, we would like the Chinese media to stay behind so that you could ask us specific question in Mandarin or in Cantonese. Uh, 所以我们会邀请中文传媒的朋友如果你们想留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请你们留下请
so any question from our Chinese media or the Zhongmen Chinmui get Pang Yao Yamo Mantai? Uh uh project. Um uh, uh, 没有问题然后就是我看到你们那个website上面有一个简体和繁体的中文那那个部分的content和content和那个英文是一样的吗你们是在做translation呢还是说会有一些特别的给中文读者的内容其实我们英文的内容也是经过 过类的是配合我们社区的文化追求，所以其实中文的个内容跟英文应该是基本上是一样的。但是我们在安排英文的内容方面，不是就按主流的东西就就搬搬过去，而是也啊按照我们的社区的那个文化背景啊跟那个其
So for our mental health, we really focused on uh, positive yes, psychology orientation. Let me share the website. So we focus on pathologizing um, mental health and mental illness. Uh, 心理健康这个部分，其实主要是以积极心理学这个呃学科为导向的，这个心理学背景为导向的。然后现在就是给大家看一下我们的这个网站。嗯哼，呃，so we have six main sections of our mental health. Uh, so focusing on promoting mental health. 我们这个心理健康部分主要有六个。可以分为六个部分。第一个部分呢，就是啊，增强我们的心理健康。You uh, uh, can click on the Chinese interface. Mm -hmm. uh, dear, oh, second, the second part is coping. Uh, so coping with the immediate effects of um, COVID nineteen, such as problem solving, um, controlling and uh, navigating information relating to COVID nineteen. 第二个就是大家看到的这个应对的部分，应对的部分其实主要介绍了一些怎怎么应对二零一九新冠肺炎的技巧啊，怎么解决实际的问题啊等等这些。嗯哼。The uh, third portion is uh, focusing on self care, highlighting some self care strategies, how to eat, sleep, and move to boost your resilience and um and mindfulness practices and strategies. 那第三个方面呢，就是自我护理这个部分。自我护理的前两点呢，就是说一些给大家提供一些自我护理的技巧。然后呢，我们还会给大家一些，比如说如何饮食、睡眠，然后呃运动等等这个方面的技巧都有提
着重强调复原力。Mm -hmm. So uh, users can log on. Uh, so visit our website, not log on, visit our website and uh, go through an interactive resilience questionnaire. Uh,大家浏览我们的网站时，就可以看到我们的这个在线调查问卷，就可以在这个及时在网站上填写这一份就是有互动性质的问卷。嗯哼，而且这个文件很快可以填，就是只有二十七个问题。Oh, spoken Chinese again. Uh, so let me finish filling out a sample survey. And then uh, immediately we will get a result on different aspects that make up our resilience capacity. So results will break down uh, all the different aspects that we source our resilience from because resilience is not just, you know, rooted within ourselves. We also source it from different areas of our lives, such as how well we can access the available social and medical services that are so important right now. So uh, we can highlight the different areas and how they contribute to our resilience, as well as get a breakdown of your score in different um, areas and also suggestions for what you can do to increase your resilience. Now,通过这个结果呢,我们就可以看到我们就是关于复原力不同方面的一些分数和指标,同时呢,在这个不同的分数和指标下面,我们会为大家提供详细的一些建议和指导。嗯, that's it. 谢谢, Thank you, Nina. So maybe actually we could take um, people through the other parts of our website and sure. have that bilingual <laughs> presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Josephine, you want to, and Mandana, you want to show the uh, other part, staying healthy? And Nina? Uh, Nina can actually do that directly in Mandarin because Nina was part of our group. Right, Nina? Nina, uh, too. Uh, biomedical group. Uh, biomedical group. Mm -hmm. OK,好的,好的。那么我现在就是用中文带大家快速浏览一下我们这个,就是跟身体健康,刚,因为刚刚刘博士还有冯医生给大家介绍了很多心理健康的东西嘛,那么我现在就给大家介绍一下就是身体
二零一九新冠肺炎紧紧相关的一些生活小技巧，比如说要。勤洗手啊，然后洗手时间一定要超过二十六秒啊。然后比如说，如果没有洗手，不要去用双手触碰你的眼睛、嘴巴等等。然后比如说，保持社交距离等等，这些最重要的啊、呃、一些防防疫技巧，我们在这里都通过这种很有趣的。啊，图标形式向大家直观、生动地展示出来，这就是跟一般传统媒体上只给大家展示那种文字信息很大的不同。这个也就是我们在这里独有的创新点。那么每一个图标旁边呢，我们都会给大家列列出最权威，同时也是最新的呃相关资源网站。大家就是通过点击图标的网站，可以比如说啊、呃，我们这里有列到这个。香港政府的网站呢、啊，也有列到这个呃世界卫生组织的网站呢、啊，然后也有列到这个多伦多公共卫生局的网站，这个都是全部都是最新最权威的官方资料，大家可以就是进去详细的看，比如说呃我们应该怎么戴口罩啊，或者是戴完了口罩应该怎么处理啊等等这些详细的资源信息。而且这边要特别提到的一点呢，就是说我们这些列到的所有资源信息，既有中文，也有。呃，既有英文，也有中文的简体字和繁体字，所以就是它也是体现了一个我们多语言化的服务功能。好，谢谢我。我们目前就是这个关于身体健康这块，就是主要是这两个部分，想给大家介绍。So maybe Alan, you can、yeah. uh, show the social part. 那我们也看一下那个 social 社区。健康的部分吧，但是还是 Lina 的普通话说的比较好，我可以用啊<笑>、呃、广东话说，你用普通话说好吗？好好好，哎、呃、不、呃，但是麻烦您说慢一点，我广东话听力不是那么好。哦<笑>、oh, ，I can speak English 没。没没关系没关系，我可以我可以听懂，我可以听懂，就是您您不要说太快，我没问题应该。咁而家我哋就想诶同、呃、大家分享下呢个社区。誒、uh, 資訊嗰方面嘅，咁咧誒 ，actually if we go back to， 啊，即係我哋英文咧叫 working together 啦，中文就係攜手同行啦。啊，現在就是主要給大家介紹一下社區諮詢的這方面的信息，然後我們的英文呢就是叫 working together， 然後我們的中文就是這邊大家看到的携手同行。啊、我哋第一個 page 咧應該係去翻嗰個 racism and discrimination 嗰度嘅。我们第一个这个呃社区咨询相关的信息那个网页应该就是说呃抗击 discrimination 抗击这个叫什么抗击呃，对反对歧视啊，哦对反对歧视。Jenny, we should go back to the racism stigma and discrimination page first. So、uh, I'm gonna go to the front page if that's okay because I actually can't read the Chinese very well. So I'm kind of blindly. <laughs> okay, so uh, under uh, getting services so... and support,、mm -hmm. uh, we have the under getting services we, we have yeah racism and stigma and discrimination. So this is where we、um, provide information on、um, the context of. Stigma and discrimination report on some of the、uh, policy and news, and also if you click the second click, you can see that there is the practical tips.、Um, 这个页面呢，就是我们汇总了比较新的、比较全的啊，就是说政策或者等等一些新闻上的种族歧视或者污名化的这个一些新闻。然后同时呢，下面还有一些怎么应对种族歧视和污名化的技巧策略，就是现在给大家展示的这个页面。嗯，呢个就系我哋诶讲一啲，我哋点样可以诶应对呢个歧视啊、污名化同埋诶诶种族仇恨嘅。問題，咁亦都包括咗咧，係誒同其他社會公義嘅運動嘅合作啦，亦都係包括咗誒唔同嘅啊，包括咗啊平權會多倫多分會嗰個誒問卷啦。啊，這個就是這個頁面，主要給大家介紹了一些怎麼反對污名化、歧視種族主義等等的這個技巧。同時呢，我們還跟不同的這個平權機構有合作，比如說剛剛給大家展示的那個多倫多。呃，全全家华人
协进会、多伦多分会。So we can go back to the. 誒，咁另外一方面咧，我哋亦都有一啲好誒 practical， 即係好實用嘅資料咧，係關於啊點樣去申請誒收入嘅援助啊，同埋誒社區服務啊、法律誒援助同埋醫療服務嘅資訊嘅。同时呢，就是现在刚刚给大家展示的那个板块，我们还会为大家提供非常实用的一些技巧，比如说包括啊、呃，你的包括对您的收入支持啊，社区法律等等医疗服务或者一些社区资源等等，我们都会为大家提供相关的信息。咁亦都包括我哋诶社区唔同嘅服务机构嘅资料啦，咁亦都系会啊有一啲政府申请唔同嘅补助啊，或者系。誒、呃、支持嘅嘅連結嘅，嗯，這裡就是會為大家提供，比如說不同的，呃，怎麼樣申請政府補助的一些資料啊，或者是一些有用的官方連接，在這裡都有提到。Jenny, can you go back to the in, yeah, in this one, income support? No. The second. Let me, let me navigate in English for now. Um, income support and the. Yeah. So, each section we basically uh, because we realize that service navigation is actually quite difficult because there's lots and lots of information and there's each level of government has their support. Uh, System and resources. So we actually grouped it in a way that is very straightforward, very uh, practical. So then people and and all the resources uh, we link to the Chinese sources if available, or we try to translate them if it's not available. And also we link it to the uh, visual materials that are developed by, for example, the uh, Metro Toronto uh, Chinese and Southeast Asian Legal Clinic. Um, so there is a video. Uh, Helping people how to apply for the Canadian Emergency Response Fund. 嗯，这里呢，因为我们也了解到，可能有时候对于大家来说，要浏览不同的服务信息，实在是比较麻烦、比较繁杂的一件事。所以呢，这边我们就为大家提供了这个便利，我们直接把所有的官方服务信息都汇总，就是重要的官方服务信息都汇总到这里。啊，这里有这些呃，可供大家选择的这个链接。大家就可以直接点击在我们这里看，就非常方便。同时呢，我们这里不光有英文，还有简体中文和繁体中文的服务。大家就是呃，也应对了不同语言的这个浏览者的需求。呃，如果有一些啊、呃，比如说没有官方中文对应版本的话呢，我们也已经自己把它把原本的英文材料翻译成了中文。啊、呃，这个中文也是经过反复校对的。呃，同时呢，这个不光提供文字资文字资料，这边还有就是官方的一些视频供大家观看，就是更直观的向大家展示一些信息。Okay, so can we go back then to the、uh, community action working together part? So the working together part, as I mentioned earlier, is a space. It's really a community space.、Um, so next page. So where there is space for us to、uh, share stories. So some of the news、uh, here, we pay tribute to one of our senior pioneers who unfortunately passed away during the COVID-19 pandemic.、Um, and then, but we also carry uh, stories uh, and link to stories of our communities,、uh, mutual support initiatives, some of the advocacy,、um, and some of the news reporting on racism. 呃，就是这个呃 ，working together， 就是携手，就是刚刚那个呃，李医生提到的这个 working together 这一块呢，我们主要是其实就是一个社区的这么一个网络空间。我们在这里呢，会分享一些故事，分享一些新闻。比如说，我们分享的故事可以是啊、呃，之前的一个呃。在行就是积极行动的长者，他在呃二零一九新冠肺炎中不幸逝去世的故事，或者是一些怎么样社区互助、大家互助、呃共同防疫的这个故事和新消息，我们都会在这里分享
。咁亦都有一啲係關於我哋社區嘅行動啦，同埋互相支援嘅呢嘅呢個資訊啦。咁亦都有一個地方係俾我哋去分享我哋嘅故事嘅。如果你有一啲經歷啊，或者你誒有啲故事同我哋分享咧，你可以誒誒、呃呃、寄嚟俾我哋。咁另外咧 ，supporting our community 嗰個 page 咧，我哋就會 share 一啲現有嘅啊、呃，關於誒、呃、新冠肺炎嘅誒、呃、社區互助嘅嘅運動啦，譬如誒嗰、呃那個 Stop COVID-19 嗰個運動係即係幫助社區籌募一啲誒 PPE 啊，誒嗰啲咁嘅嘢啦。咁就另外一個係啊，關於其他唔同地區誒、啊、華人互助嘅一啲誒、啊、經驗分享，咁亦都有一啲 tips 咧，係我哋點樣可以支持我哋本地或者我哋社區裏邊嘅誒商務誒、啊、商業機構啊，因為我哋亦都知道咧，我哋好多誒環、啊、社區嘅誒。啊誒，譬如餐館啊，或者係好多嘅商店咧，受到好大嘅影響啦。嗯，這裡呢，就是首先，還是請大家，如果啊，身邊有什麼故事，大家有可以分享的故事的話咧，也分歡迎大家分享給我們，就是我們到時候會啊發布在這個。呃、uh, ，working together 这个就是专门针对社区故事的这个板块。同时呢，我们这个社区这个板块下面呢，还会啊、呃、及时的分享一些社区互助的行动。啊、呃，除了这个社区互助的行动呢，我们也会给。啊、呃，也会分享一些就是华人互助的一些经验啊、呃。除除此之外呢，我们也特别提到了一些怎么就是去支持本地的这个一些商务，比如说就是最简单来说，就是我们日常经常会接触到的一些餐馆呐、啊、商店啊等等，我们这边都有一些小技巧策略，就是怎么去支持他们。咁誒，另外最後咧就係 taking action 嗰嗰方面啦，就係點樣共同誒行動啦。咁呢度咧，我哋會係有一啲誒唔同嘅社區發動緊嘅，譬如簽名運動啊，或者係誒一啲抗議嘅行動啊，或者係一啲誒新誒倡導呢啲政誒政策改革嘅問題。咁我哋都會拎去呢啲誒網站同埋連結嘅。呃，最后一个部分呢，就是 taking action， 就是一起行动这个部分。在这个部分呢，我们会发布一些比较及时的社区行动，比如说一些签名行动啊、政策改革行动啊等等，我们到时候都会发布在这里。And if we look at the click Jenny, if you click at the Toronto area online, uh, petition. No, 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 no. In the middle of the page, under change.org, and then you know many diverse group in the Toronto area. Is it this one? No, 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 no. Just back. Okay. So, no. The next paragraph, the hyperlink this at the end. Yeah. So this is where you can see a whole list of local. Toronto area community actions uh, that you can either connect to, participate, or support. Uh, this page, uh, through the Okay, so I think that's kind of the main thing, and then people can also pitch their own ideas, and there's a box for us to submit uh, your ideas and action as well. So uh, it's a very uh, interactive, um, active site that you can actually, if you have an issue of concern or if you have a community care initiative or action you want to advocate for, you can also submit to us. 同时呢，我们这个网站也充分体现了它的这个积极互动性。最呃比较重要的一个体现点呢，就是说在这里，您可以，如果您有一些什么，比如说想法、行动，想要采取的行动，或者有一些等等的顾虑等等，都可以通过在这个啊、呃、在线填这个表格联系我们。
呃，或者就是通过在线填填这个表格啊、呃，联系我们之后呢，以推动您的这个想法和行动。Okay. Uh, so I think that's kind of the highlight of the social part of the website.、Um, does anyone has any other questions? So the live chat will launch tomorrow. I think we mentioned that a few more times. I just want to put it, put that out there. I don't know, if Nina, you want to kind of share that in Chinese? Uh, 就是说你们的那个。在线聊天功能明天就会可以上线了，是吗？嗯，明天就上线。嗯，一般是星期二的星期六两点到，哦，不是十点到三点，然后星期三晚上六点半到九点，都是多、嗯、很多时间。大家可以明天关注一下我们网站的这个在线聊天功能，是非常棒的一个在线聊天互动功能。呃，听了好奇啊。What's the hours again, Kenneth? You want to say in、oh. Chinese? It's ten to three Tuesday to、uh, Saturday, Cantonese, and then one evening on Wednesday.、Mm -hmm. Kenneth, you're on mute. If you wanted to say in Cantonese, 系我呢个服务时间系星期二至星期六，诶、呃，早上十点钟至下午几多点啊？三點鐘，<笑>另外啲誒每逢星期三晚誒六至係咪六點至九點啊？好似係六點至九點，亦都會有一個晚上嘅嘅時刻，因為我哋知道好多人喺日頭可能唔得閒啦，咁所以我哋都會開夜班，一個星期一次，係星期三晚上。如果有咁嘅需要咧，就鼓勵大家可以誒致電我嘅電話啦，又或者係去瀏覽我哋嘅網站，用我哋嘅。Live chat 可以 text 你嘅唔同嘅問題。週末咧，係星期二至六嘅。星期六啊，星期六就亦都係十點至三點啊。係啊。嗯哼。但係如果我哋傳媒朋友同我哋揾多啲義工，咁我哋就會長啲時間啦。Uh, so if we get oh， 如果我們要是有更多人支持的話，我們可以開時間更多。将会有更多人给你们服务，对，所以就是希望大家多多支持我们，可以来当我们这个在线聊天功能的志愿者，欢迎大家。Team effort translation. I know Nina is the best. <笑> OK， 咁我谂诶时间都差唔多啦，诶我哋可以诶如果诶其他传媒朋友想让我哋个别咧做诶做访问，我哋可以迟啲再。如果咁你可以 contact 啊 Keith 嗰個啊 media contact， 咁佢會幫我哋約時間嘅。So if you want to organize or invite any of us to do more interviews, please contact、uh, Keith, who's on your media contact list, and we'll be happy to、uh, talk to you more. 誒、okay, uh, ，如果大家之後還想就是對我們誒、uh, 在座的幾位誒。Uh, 医生、教授等等进行采访的话，那么请联系这个我们的项目经理 Keith， 大家应该在那个媒体网站上都能看到他的那个信息。嗯，即系如果大家想啊，再约我哋做一啲比较深入嘅访问啊，诶、啊、或者录影录像咧，我哋可以诶、啊、联络我哋啦。多谢大家 ，Thank you，Thank you， 多谢 ，Thank you everyone。Thank you. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. 多谢大家，大家保重。Thank you. Yeah, take care, everyone. 大家保重，保重。Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. 谢谢大家，再见。再见。